Keeping up morale on the front line. Will attempt to escape from an army sleeping bag. Far from the nearest town or village, in a country where non-alcoholic beer is the best a soldier can look forward to at the end of the day, the troops are making their own entertainment. The British squads have formed their own desert football league, while snipers demonstrate another form of marksmanship on the practice range. The 3rd Regiment of Royal Fusiliers take advantage of the prolonged wait to turn a remote area of desert into a parade ground. The plan is to produce a special photograph for the regiment's records. A picture that can only be taken from a helicopter. In combat, the regiment would never place its men and machines in such a confined area. But this staged formation gives an idea of the scale of the war effort. From the sharp end, the infantry and their armoured carriers, and the Challenger tanks that would spearhead any British assault, back through the supply and logistics chain that keeps a modern army in this most inhospitable of battlefields. This just one part of the British force that is itself a small part of the coalition army. While diplomats now debate Saddam Hussein's offer to quit Kuwait, the Allied war program continues uninterrupted. This seven-year-old country anthem has become the home front battle hymn for Operation Desert Storm. And it's not just this song. At country radio stations, there is an insatiable appetite for any song that supports the nation or its troops. And I was just wondering if you'd play Walk on Faith for him and all the other troops. Over I'll here. do it. Don't that song make you feel good? Yes, it does. It makes me feel better every time I hear it. With titles like Thoughts on the Flag and Heading for Armageddon, producers are launching war songs faster than the Iraqis can fire Scud. Somebody's army is always on the move. Cable TV's Nashville Network plays half a dozen videos that feature pro-country or pro-military themes. It has turned down four times that many. Soldier boy, oh my little soldier boy. The place is the Middle East. The time is now. ...being stifled while supporting British forces now in the Gulf. They doubt the morality of the war. I believe that, that this war can't be justified. I believe it can't be justified because I don't believe we've gone as far as we could have gone to find some other way of dealing with the problem. I don't believe that our hands are clean enough in the Middle East to make it justified. The recently retired Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Robert Runcie, moved from initial hope that sanctions would work to resignation to war and now support for it and those conducting it. That corresponds closely to the views of people in Britain generally and to that of churchgoers and clergymen. I think it's proper for us to be there. Sometimes you have to stop evil. Uh, kindly people don't always see that. But this man is behaving as a bully, a dangerous man. If we don't stop him now, the results could be terrifying. But one strongly anti-war figure not normally linked with left-wing causes is the Pope. He's repeatedly criticized the Americans saying the horrors of modern warfare make it an unacceptable way of solving international problems. Many in the British Catholic hierarchy share those views. I believe that a war, especially in today's world, should be the real last resort. And I don't feel it was the last resort. And then the other ground where I feel the war is not justified is the fact that the danger and damage it's doing is probably out of all proportion to what it hopes to gain. As for British congregations generally, both sides in the debate accept that above all they want to support British servicemen and women facing the perils of war. But the war's critics deny most churchgoers are hostile to their viewpoint. I had a letter the other day from a, from a curate who preached in his church and had said, would people come and talk to me afterwards? And you know, half the congregation appeared and, and said hey, you know, how uncomfortable they were about the whole thing. My great fear is that the young men who've gone out, come back wounded in body and mind, seeing their friends killed. I think it would be disastrous and terrible if by our talk 
we made it seem that their sacrifices were morally uh, doubtful. There is a genuine split within the churches. That's widely accepted. What remains to be seen is whether the war's critics really will gather support if the conflict proves lengthy.